how long they hold on to them for, they remain your things. And as long as generation after generation, the people who've been robbed are determined to recover that which is theirs, then I believe that the uh, good will triumph and justice will triumph in the end. I don't know when. I used to, when I started this in 1975, I was 21 years old, I believed that one day I personally would walk in a free Palestine. Maybe not now, but I have, mashallah, a son less than two years old, Zinedine George Galloway, and I'm sure that he will walk in a free Palestine. Automatic right of return 
for anybody converted to Judaism in Central Park on a, on a April afternoon, of course. For everyone who's living there now, plus the Palestinians who were driven from their homes, can make this country and can make it a democratic one. And uh, who knows who'll stay? Who knows who'll go? You can call it what you like. You can put the accent or the accentuation on whichever word you like. But I believe that that's infinitely preferable to trying to unpick this balkanization which has occurred even since Oslo, where the apartheid wall has grown, where the settlements have grown, where the ethnic cleansing of Jerusalem has proceeded a pace where massacres like Gaza have occurred. I don't believe that the two-state solution, which the PLO or the PNA is still officially committed to, I don't believe that that's going to happen. So if it's not going to happen, why should we go around arguing for it when it's much less justifiable and preferable than the one state from the river to the sea? That's my view. more questions, so we're going to stop collecting the postcards now. Um, did any building supplies and materials get into Gaza? Why did you change your plans and not stay more than three days inside Gaza? No, these were our plans. And uh, you know, I think the Arabs uh, have this, along with the Chinese, that like fish, like fish, the guest begins to go off after three days. And, uh, and we were determined that uh, the Palestinians in Gaza have enough trouble without looking after 350 crazy British. So we were never going to stay there more than three days. That's how long we planned to stay, and that's how long we stayed, and no building materials were allowed in. What happens is that Rafa allows only medicine and medical equipment which, if you think about it, is madness. That means you can't bring bread to feed somebody, but you could give them an aspirin to cure the headache caused by the hunger for the last bread. <laughs> so the official position of Rafa is that it can take only medicine and medical equipment. Everything else has to go through the Israeli checkpoint, which means most of it never does go through the Israeli checkpoint. But, and here's the interesting thing, one night in Al Arish, which will be the title, I think, of my, my next uh, book. It's not nearly as exotic as it sounds. Uh, all the customs, or I better not say who they were, all the Egyptian officials came to a car park in Al Arish, ostensibly to go through with a fine tooth comb everything on our vehicles and separate it into what was allowed and what was not allowed. But once they took everything out that was not allowed, they turned their backs and told us quickly, quickly, get it back on the <laughs> This is significant, because this means that the Egyptian masses, even in the security apparatus, even in the police of the other services, cannot support this stand that their regime is imposing. And if they did that with us, I'm certain they'll do it with the American trucks, and I'll be there. I know that car park in Al Arish. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, one is the most important thing that you can share with us from your most recent trip to Gaza? And we're going to end with that question. Well, it would be this. It would be this. I said as I was leaving Gaza, and it was a message for many people. I said, I described how horrific everything is in Gaza as I have done with you this evening, but I added this point. If Israel or anybody else, or anybody else, believes that by bombardment and siege, they're going to force the Palestinian people to surrender their rights. They're making a big mistake. The Palestinians are made strong. And, and if the plan was to destroy the resistance, believe me, please believe me, the Palestinian resistance is not broken. 